Hi, everyone. I have decided to release a series of lectures on microplastics, and this is the first lecture of that series. I'm Nima Shokri. I'm the chair and professor of geohydroinformatics at Hamburg University of Technology in Germany, and I'm the head of the Institute of Geohydroinformatics. This is the website to our institute. In case if you're interested, please feel free to visit this page uh, to learn more about our teaching and research activities. In terms of resources, I, I used several uh, books and many papers and reports published by different organizations uh, to prepare this lecture series. In terms of books, I used mainly three books that are uh, Microplastics in Terrestrial Environments, published in 2021, and then pa Particulate Plastics in Terrestrial and Aquatic Environments, which was published in 2020. And the third one is Microplastic Pollutants, which was published in 2017. In addition to these books, I used several papers and reports published by, let's say, UN and EU and so on. The good news is the majority of those reports are open access. So if you're interested, uh, you, can, uh, you, can, you can find them on internet and to learn more detail about the topic. I like to start my lecture by showing this figure, which provides a very good uh, uh, idea, a very good picture regarding the annual production of the plastic on a global scale, okay? Here, the y-axis is the million tons of plastic produced, and the x-axis is the, uh, the year. As you can see here, in 1950, we were producing about 2 million tons of plastic per year, 2 million tons. But by 2015, by 2015, we reached roughly 381 million tons of plastic per year. So in 1950, 2 million. In 2015, uh, about 381 million tons per year. In other words, in about 65 years, the global production of the plastic has increased nearly 200 times. Okay, and which is the concerning um, problem. So by 2015, the world had produced 7.8 billion tons of plastic. 7.8 billion tons of plastic. Just to put it in the context, it means more than one ton of plastic for every person alive today. Okay, and and uh, and. Uh, here uh, you see here in this in this uh, chart uh, it all uh, it also uh, determined the contribution or let's put it let, let's say how much plastic was was produced in different basically region in 2014 China Europe USA rest of Asia and so on okay uh, so the problem is the majority of these plastics the majority of these plastic products as high as 79 percent are discarded into the environment. That's the main problem. And then this plastic, this discarded plastics, they uh, they can be fragmented and turn to in, uh, turn into much much smaller uh, uh, plastic particles. And microplastics generally refers to the plastics that is less than five millimeter in size. So when the size of those fragmented particles are less than five millimeter, uh, the, 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 they are usually called microplastics. But we will talk more detail about the classification of the microplastics and, and terminology and so on. Okay, uh, so th that is what microplastic is. Uh, so the objective of this lecture series, uh, my objective is that I want to provide in-depth understanding of sources of microplastics in the environment, where do they come from, uh, their distribution, their extent, and so on, and some analytical tools to characterize the microplastic and also their transport and fate in the environment, okay? But I wanted to put a particular focus on processes occurring in soil, okay? And this is objective number one. The second objective I have uh, in this lecture series is that I would like to raise the awareness about microplastic effects uh, in the environment using a state-of-the-art science uh, and, and, and development. The majority of the papers and reports I use in this uh, course, you will see they're, they're, they're all cited here. You will see that majority of them are published uh, very recently, 2021, 2020, 2019, and so on. So I wanted to use these uh, resources uh, and uh, uh, to, to raise the awareness 
regarding uh, the, the adverse impact and consequence of microplastics in environment. Okay, I, I also wanted to highlight here that the tools and topics and, and, and techniques that we will discuss in this lecture series, uh, obviously we focus on the microplastic in environment, but these tools can be as well used in, uh, in other disciplines and in, uh, they will be relevant to address other uh, environmental and, uh, and industrial uh, challenges. Okay? So, uh, first I wanted to start here by uh, elaborating a little bit more on why it is important. Why is it important we learn about, uh, we learn about the microplastic, for example, in the environment, right? There are several uh, consequences. There are several adverse effects of the microplastic in the environment. Uh, that list can, it can be a very, very long list but I don't want to uh, spend the rest of this uh, lecture hours and hours and talk about the adverse effect, but I, I choose a couple of, uh, I would say, uh, at least in my opinion, more important ones uh, to list here that to show uh, how uh, to, to, to discuss a little bit about the adverse impact of the um, uh, microplastic, but this list is not uh, like a complete list. I, I, I will not be surprised if you can come up with more uh, or other 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 issues. The first, uh, I wanted to highlight the effect of the microplastic on uh, the ec ecological impact of the microplastic. And, and, and it can have several e ecological impact. The first of all is entanglement. And, uh, and most likely, uh, most of you have already heard or have seen that, uh, that the entanglement basically, entanglement of the individual animals by plastics, different shapes, different size in different environment is one of the most obvious ecological impact of the improperly disposed plastics. And, and uh, there are uh, the, so many disturbing pictures on internet regarding the uh, entanglement uh, of animals by plastic and uh, and uh, which is very sad which is very sad um, uh, so but these are some of the examples that you see when they are not properly uh, disposed they may end up uh, in in, in in aquatic uh, environment in, in in other places and and uh, obviously will will with, with serious um, ecological uh, impact for for animals. Okay, uh, 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 another uh, pro another ecological impact is the ingestion, and that basically refers that the ingestion of plastics by animal is uh, is, um, uh, is is another problem uh, of uh, improper disposal of uh, disposal of the plastic in the environment. And here uh, you can uh, there were like lots of if you just write ingestion, uh, ecological impact, microplastic, you will find a lot of disturbing uh, basically picture on internet, uh, which I didn't feel comfortable to put here. And instead I uh, use this uh, beautiful art, uh, the references here, uh, where uh, very nicely uh, the, the artist is showing the ingestion of the uh, plastic by the animal. And not only, of course, it, it, uh, it uh, 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 it has serious uh, effect, uh, health-related issues for the animal, but also it can easily um, uh, enter our food chain, which will uh, put human uh, health as well at, uh, at risk. Okay, uh, so this is a, a, an interesting figure published uh, in 2020 Nature Communication, the journal Nature Communication, where uh, you see on the y axis the size of the ingested plastic, and the, on the x axis is the animal body length. And as you see, they, they find a quite a strong correlation between uh, size of the plastic uh, ingested by the animal and the size of the animal uh, itself. And, and it's really uh, a sad picture when you look at, for example, animal uh, of the body length, let's say this one, for example, about one meter, and you see sometime you go up here, uh, they may, you, may, uh, you may find uh, plastic with the size of, I don't know, a couple of hundred millimeter in that one meter animal. So obviously that will have a lot of uh, consequences of the animal uh, life and so on. Uh, so ingestion is another uh, adverse ecological impact of macroplastic in environment, okay? Uh, another uh, if ecological impact is the habitat damage. 
and coral reefs and mangroves are the prime example of the habitat damage due to the improper disposal of the uh, plastic. There is a very nice paper published in 2018 in Science uh, where they studied the, the, the likelihood of disease of uh, reef building corals uh, in the presence and absence of the plastic. So what they did, they looked into the, the risk, the, the disease risk in 124,000 reef building coral from 190, 159 reefs in the Asia Pacific region. And they found that the likelihood of the disease increases from 4% to 89% when the corals were in contact with plastic. So this figure basically shows the likelihood of the disease when the, when the coral were not, when the corals were not in contact with the plastic, but here when they were in contact with the plastic. And you see the, the significant impact of the uh, addition of this uh, or the presence of this uh, improper disposal of the uh, plastic on the, uh, on, the, on, on, on the likelihood of the disease, okay? So far, I only discussed about the uh, adverse ecological consequences of the uh, improperly disposed plastics in the environment. But obviously, there are other consequences. And one of them is water contamination due to the improperly disposed plastics to the environment. And this is not a uh, claim anymore, but it's a fact that the water analysis worldwide indicate the presence of the plastic uh, in, in aquatic uh, environment, in both freshwater and marine ecosystem. And that poses a serious um, problem on multiple fronts, okay? And this picture uh, shows uh, schematically the main sources and pathways of the uh, macroplastics and microplastics to water. And uh, so there are different sources. You see different sec sectors actually are kind of uh, causing this problem. Uh, and, uh, and examples of the main sources of the macroplastics include personal care products, cosmetic products, plastic pellets, washing, uh, synthetic textiles in household, erosion of the tires, and so on. And we will discuss about that in, in the next chapter when we talk about the sources of the um, macroplastics. But the, the bottom line here is that addition of the uh, macroplastics from all these sectors to the environment uh, uh, could cause uh, water contamination. And other consequences of the improper disposal of the plastic in the environment is the economic loss. We already discussed about the uh, ecological impact of uh, improper disposal of the macroplastic in the environment, as well as uh, the, the as well as uh, the water contamination because of this. Obviously, uh, this will impact the environment and the ecosystem, and this will affect the ecosystem services. For example, uh, activities such as tourism or food production or shipping, recreation, and so on, all of them will be impacted by the improper uh, disposal of the plastic to the environment. Okay, and there will be, uh, uh, and that will translate into the economic loss. And the uh, full extent of this economic uh, loss on a global scale is not clear. Uh, but in 2014, uh, United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP, basically they estimated $75 billion, $75 billion in 2014, the natural capital cost of plastic in the consumer goods uh, sector per year. $75 billion, but that was 2014. And if you remember that first curve I showed where, where, uh, where uh, the annual production, annual production of the plastic on a global scale uh, was uh, illustrated, you see that that curve is like an exponential curve. So uh, nowadays I will not be surprised if this number is much, much more. And then they estimated $13 billion as the total natural capital cost to marine ecosystems of the plastic uh, littering per year, $13 billion. But the good news was that they estimated that $4 billion uh, was the amount that could be saved by consumable goods companies through good management, uh, management of the plastic, for example, just by uh, recycling. The, uh, just by through the recycling, they could uh, save $4 billion. So the bottom line is the economic loss, uh, the, 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 the improper disposal of the plastic to the environment can have a serious economic loss and the full extent of that on a global scale is not uh, clear, okay? Another effect, another adverse effect, the health risk, 
Okay, and considering that the plastic is now everywhere in the environment, uh, the exposure of the humans and other species to the plastic through, let's say, air, water, and soil and food is rapidly increasing, and that will pose serious risk uh, to to human and animal uh, health. Um, uh, for example, a, 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 a problem is the toxic exposure from the incinerated mixed waste that contain the plastic. Right, so so you you do the incineration here, but this uh, 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 the the presence of the toxic material could cause problem, could cause a uh, problem to the human health because we are breathing in that uh, that air. Uh, other problem, of course, is the uh, entering that plastic to our uh, our food chain. Uh, there is a this is a quite a disturbing. Um, uh, figure here, disturbing a uh, statistic here, that is one fourth of the fish contained plastic in the study that basically they found that the, the one quarter of the fish sampled from fish markets in California and Indonesia contained plastic pieces and fibers in their gut. So that obviously uh, uh, poses serious uh, uh, health issues to the animal, but also uh, since we are consuming that fish, uh, that as well uh, uh, can enter the food chain and cause a uh, problem uh, for uh, human health. Okay, so uh, so another uh, another uh, adverse consequence of the improper disposal of the plastic in the environment is the soil contamination. We talked about water contamination, but of course, soil contamination is uh, is another big problem, and and because the soil could represent a big, big reservoir for this, all these plastics. And obviously the presence of the plastic will affect soil physical and chemical properties. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and the, in other words, uh, uh, the soil functions, the functions that you expect from a healthy soil will be impacted because of the presence of those plastics. The soil physical and chemical characteristics will be modified. The stability of the soil will, might, might be modified. The permeability, the vetability, and so on. And that obviously uh, we cannot afford that because soil is playing such an important role, is providing such an important service for uh, for the ecosystem uh, when it comes to I don't know food production, biodiversity, soil stability, and so on. Uh, so so uh, risking soil. Uh, 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 risking soil health because of the improper disposal of the um, uh, plastic to the environment is another uh, serious uh, consequences of the of this uh, topic. Okay, as I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture, uh, I can list the I can provide a long list of the adverse uh, the consequence of the improper disposal of the plastic in the environment. Uh, but uh, obviously, in this lecture series, I have other objectives as well. I wanted to talk about the more detail about the sources of this plastic, where do they come from, the characteristics of those plastics, the fate and transport of these plastics. So I, I'm going to uh, finish this uh, uh, lecture here. We discussed about the um, adverse. Uh, the, we discussed about the ecological impacts. We discussed about the water contamination. We discussed about the economic loss. We discussed about the human health. We discussed about the soil contamination as the uh, some of the uh, adverse uh, consequences of the improper disposal of the plastic uh, to the uh, to the environment uh, to show why this is important to uh, have a better understanding about this topic and uh, and to learn uh, more detail about what is causing this problem and uh, and uh, and to talk about possible uh, uh, solutions okay i wanted to finish this lecture by uh, this uh, picture that after all this after all these consequences we, we discussed is this really necessary and uh, can we do something about it right uh, is it possible to revert this trend that when we buy apple and the apple is packed in a, in a plastic um, container or plastic bag and, and can we really maybe better question to ask is can we really afford that to 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 uh, can you can we afford this uh, this uh, kind of a style and i leave you i leave this with you to uh, to think about it thank you very much